Very cool. So moving on, uh, we have Brian. And Brian is going to, Brian's joining us from Egalia, and he's going to be talking about the state of WebKit. And we're so excited about this because not enough people talk about uh, stuff that uh, is related to kind of like the stuff that WebKit is doing. So thanks, Brian, for joining us. And I see your slides are up. So feel free to start. So you can hear me, you can see my slides, we're good to go, right? Absolutely. All right, um, yeah, so this is the state of WebKit. Uh, if you're not familiar with uh, WebKit, uh, WebKit you can think of as this sort of core implementation with holes in it, and inside this lives the JavaScript core where all the fun happens. Um, and you attach to the bottom of this uh, OS level implementations, and then you get web views uh, in your browser. It's this part, the stuff in the middle. The stuff on the outside, we generally refer to as the browser Chrome. Uh, so you add the Chrome and internals, and then you have a browser. And for WebKit, when we think about uh, browsers, we generally think about Safari on iOS and Mac. But also, there is uh, Epiphany. That's the flagship browser for the GNOME desktop on Linux. Uh, so at Egalia, where I work, uh, we are the maintainers of the Epiphany browser, and we are active contributors to WebKit, very active. And uh, we also do the underlying OS implementations for Linux. Um, so uh, the terminology that we use uh, is uh, this, and it, uh, it just tells us where we're at in the process. And uh, as we go through the process, uh, you know, things are heavily in development, and then you'll see some less things in preview and less things in release. We're not going to talk about consideration because even though it's formally on the map, it's a little bit hard to read because uh, Apple doesn't always uh, tip their hand there. And also, contributions can come from WebKit, and then the line is sort of at inclusion underneath development. So these are things we're going to talk about and the terms we're going to use. So I'm going to give you a high level thing. I'm not going to go into all these, but um, this gives you an idea of how much is currently in development. Each one of these bullets represents like an entire specification, pretty much. <laughs> uh, and you'll notice that none of these include anything about the JavaScript language. Um, but at Egalia, we're also working on adding big in support and uh, even optimizations for this already, which is stage three ECMA right now. Uh, public and private class fields, uh, pretty interesting. Also ECMA stage three. Uh, private fields provide strong encapsulation boundary, which is really cool. And then when we move to preview, that list gets smaller. And when we move into releases, we have these things. And I'm just covering this high level quick first so that I can also point out that in addition to not including JavaScript, this list don't include any of these things about the much work that goes into bug fixes and web compatibility and performance and memory use. Uh, web Inspector, for example, has had a ton of work recently. And uh, I'll just mention one bullet I particularly like there recently added support for dragging and dropping a uh, har archive into the network tab, which I think is a really cool and great feature. It's kind of a big thing, but it doesn't even make it into a bullet that doesn't make it into the other list. So um, we're going to talk about just a couple of like high level things. There are first two new and shiny things that are um, like very early still. Uh, there's dark mode, uh, which the CSS working group is now working on getting standardized. But uh, the uh, operating systems have dark mode. And uh, some browsers uh, consult that when they're rendering the, the um, form controls and things. Uh, so as an author of web pages, it's difficult for you to prognosticate what your web page is even going to look like. And it is also difficult for you to uh, provide good UI and respect users' preferences. So the idea with uh, the color schemes in dark mode is to give you a way as an uh, author to plug into that. And then there's also the web share API, which is shipping. Uh, which Paul also talked about in Chrome. 
so I won't cover that again. Um, but uh, those are the new and shiny things, but coming from web development myself very recently, uh, I want to talk about like a couple of under-celebrated wins for developers because I know that having the new shiny things are is awesome, but your day-to-day -day frustrations are frequently about things that are older, for example, that uh, just aren't implemented somewhere. So we just landed input type color, uh, which is great. Uh, I think for developers, if you need this, uh, this is a super big win. And you see how green the can I use is for that now. Same with data list. I think that this is another feature that is part of the HTML5. Uh, the basic support uh, has been pretty consistent across the board for a while, and we've been lagging, so we have that. Um, pointer events also uh, landed. Uh, general way to reason about all of the pointy things. <laughs> um, a single consistent API and way of thinking about it. I think that this landing is going to be really big. Uh, it's uh, behind a flag in the latest uh, normal release, and it is unprefixed in the current technology previews. Um, there's also constant work going on in standards and in uh, browsers uh, to create self-consistency in the platform, parity and alignment, uh, make things reasonable and consistent. So for example, recently, uh, window.open, uh, it effectively follows a linky thing, but it didn't have all of the characteristics of linky things. So uh, that's now aligned, and you can add a no refer uh, feature. Um, Role meter, <laughs> excuse me. Role meter uh, was added to Aria recently to give it parity with HTML's meter element. That's implemented and supported. And also, uh, link preloading is in development for responsive image candidate strings. So one of the problems that we've had with responsive images is uh, they, it's hard for them to work with the preloader because they don't have the information that they need. Um, so that is currently underway. I think that's going to be good. Um, the opposite of preloading images uh, is another thing that Paul talked about. It's very early, and there's still spec work to be done, but I think that there's like uh, positive things there. Um, that is currently also in development in WebKit. Um, and Paul also mentioned that Jake Archibald had some comments on that, which is a great segue for me, because I want to talk about one of Jake's slides. Um, <clears throat> so uh, if you've never seen Jake Archibald's In the Loop talk, I highly recommend it. It's a really good talk. I really like it for two reasons. One is you can see this arrow pointing to where we're doing request animation frame. Uh, he pointed out that that was incorrect, and he was correct. Uh, we were incorrect. so. Uh, that is now fixed, and I think that is really good. Um, the second reason that I like this talk, though, is that he explains the event loop really well, and he also explains why request animation frame is important. And the reason that it's important is that because uh, before request animation frame, we didn't have the thing that we need. There is a place in the platform that does that, that understands when rendering is supposed to happen. Um, and Everything that we had before that, we were trying to like back into that through pieces of the system that didn't have the information that they needed. Um, so this is kind of a general theme, and it's uh, a thing that we're going to see more and more of. So I'm excited to say that uh, Resize Observer is in preview. Resize Observer is that. Uh, it provides an efficient way to slot right into the part of the system that understands when things resize. This is a thing that you couldn't view before, like you couldn't plug into, and now you can, and that's amazing. Uh, intersection Observer is that, but it has to do with when things intersect with effectively a scroll port. Usually it's the viewport, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, so that you can say programmatically specify that when something gets within however much space of the viewport, for example, you want to go and fetch some more JSON data and do, do more work or kick off an animation or uh, whatever. So uh, 
I've already spent a really lot of time talking and um, this is just the things that are done. And as I said, these are all the things that are currently in development that would be on a future, uh, you know, a future state of WebKit. These are things that are currently underway, but I would like to hear what's important to you. Um, which things cause you pain? Where would you like to see advancements in either the web platform at large or in WebKit specifically? And how can we help? Uh, so you can find me on Twitter and let me know. Thank you so much, Brian. That's yeah, go ahead, Amal. Oh, I have a burning question. I don't know if I can wait for this one. So I, so if I'm if I'm correct, um, yeah, great work. I agree, Brian. Um, so if I'm correct, you you are implementing or or what like lazy the lazy loading um, attribute is is being implemented in WebKit. Is that correct, Brian? There, there is work begun to implement. There are okay. still open questions on some things mm -hmm. that frequently happens during implementations. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm, I guess that's great news. I think for web developers, I think I'm just, I think as like somebody who's been observing um, just, just other things in the queue for WebKit. I mean, I feel like there's things that are like actual standards that like I'm like curious, like why we're implement. You know, I, I'm, I'm interested to hear if you have any insight into the prioritization of this feature. You know, as opposed to like some things, you know, that are, you know, for real standards, right? That have been in the queue for longer. I think. Um, so do you have like specific examples or, um, you know, service workers? Yeah. So th there's work happening on that as well. So, okay. um, so I think, um, one of the things that is, uh, very complex is like how things get scheduled and why they get scheduled and what the priority is. Um, just like anywhere else you, uh, you have like finite resources and, and, and skill sets and uh, people asking for things. Um, so uh, some of this work is being done through Egalia uh, and uh, we have people who are interested in uh, funding that development, which I think is really good thing. That's cool. Thank you.